presenting the first mini web machine combo, it is the looper pile. In this poker game example, the user's hand at the bottom is a looper radio group laid out with a pile. I can use the mouse or the keyboard because the pile is great that way to select a card. And the cyclical looper aspect is really nice as you just, it kind of feels like the deck of cards should select that way, right? I should go back to the beginning. I don't want to hit the edge. And then in this image filter example, which I'm calling the double looper pile, just, just because it's fun, there's two loopers and a pile. In the middle is a looper pile, like we saw in the first example, but on the right is a looper also. The single selection from the looper pile determines which image gets the effect, and the looper on the right determines which effect goes on that selected image in the first looper, right? So we're kind of connecting them with one little line. We're saying this selection applies to this selection, which is kind of cool. You can hit tab and use the arrow keys to turn on the filters, then go back and back again and back again, use the arrows. It's kind of fun. Like literally I'm having a lot of fun just pushing the keyboard uh, and trying these things out. And it's all for free because we're using the tried and true HTML radio group pattern that we're calling the looper in this series. So check out the first mini web machine on the looper if you haven't seen it yet, because there's much more details about what this machine does and how to build one. And this episode represents the overarching theme of mini web machines, that these mini web machines can be orchestrated together to build much greater experiences. Knowing about these small bits of functional code and tying them together with a higher level purpose, it's gonna aid you in delivering really great experiences. All right, well, let's break down some of those examples that we were just looking at. In this one, up here I have an ordered list. This is just the sort of poker setup here. Nothing super special. There's no mini web machines used there other than a, I mean, it's a list element. You could call that a mini web machine. You know, you give it LIs and it produces the thing. Anyway, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this combination of the looper and the pile. And if you haven't watched these episodes yet, it will definitely help put a bunch of context into what is going on and why we're looking at the code. Because I'm not going to explain in as much detail about the looper in the pile here as much as I'm going to explain about how to combine these things together. So if we scroll down in our HTML, you'll see a field set, which has a bunch of labels wrapping an input type radio, and they all have the same name. I've even given them the looper. It's basically copied and pasted straight from the YouTube episode that we put in there. And you can also see there's a class called pile on there. And that means we're combining the pile layout mechanism with the field set radio group looper machine. And this is why we've got this setup down here where things are stacked on top of each other. So one thing is handling the layout. But if I use my keyboard over here, another thing is handling the single selection mechanism. And it's just really nice to see these things working together. And in the episode, when we talked about the pile, we showed uh, card decks and things like that. And so it was kind of nice to see um, cards and the pile put together. It was a very natural thing to happen here. I mean, it's even like the double looper demo that we show earlier. That one is also I mean, basically cards. I mean, they're Polaroids, but you know, it's pretty much the same thing. And so what I want to look at next after we've checked out the HTML is some of the CSS. So if we look down here, these are just some imports I'm, good, I'm doing. They're not that big a deal. But here's our first layout machine called the pile. And I put it in a nice layer called this. It's just easy to find. But look, it's pretty much untouched from how we originally authored it. So this is a grid. Every single card inside of that pile grid is going to be stacked on top of each other. It looks really nice. And then we also have the looper machine and it surfaces a couple of hooks for us to use with CSS, which we go over in the video. But what we're looking at here is when there's focus within, we're going to push it to Z index one. And that's why look, if I click it now, it pops to the front. And I'm looking to see that if this particular label element that's inside of my hand, uh, which is the field set, if there's a checked input radio inside of there, I want you to translate T negative 25%. And that's what's giving us these sort of pop out effects. So one particular thing is raising the Z index and another thing is changing the T. So let's also go look at T because look, I'm just setting a variable. I'm not setting translate Y, um, but I'm assuming that that's where we're going, right? Well, I mean, I, I wrote it, so I know that's where we're going, but let me show you. And so here's our hand. This is our field set element. I'm removing the border and I like legends, even if I don't always use them. Um, and in this case, I'm setting it to visibility hidden, but it is there still in the accessibility tree if someone wants to reference it. And then here's each card. I'm giving them a transform. Oh, let's switch that out. Yep. I'm giving it a transform. And look, here's a couple of variables. we got to rotate with R with the default value of zero degrees and a translate Y using that T variable with the default value of zero pixels. Probably could use percentage here. But anyway, we're setting the transform origin to center 200%. So that's imagine center being right here and 200% is way down here. It's like off screen. And that's why they fan out in kind of a cool way is because I'm not rotating them from the middle. I'm rotating them against a, a transition point way over here. 
And then I also set the transform here. So I'm transitioning the transform values as they change over 0.5 seconds. And I'm using ease spring two from open props. And that's using the linear easing function, which is super cool all on its own. If you don't know what that one is, definitely go look it up. Uh, open props just makes it really easy. It's got some built-ins and that's it. Yeah, you can see the little bit of a bounce it puts in them. It's just a little bit of life, don't you think? And then down here, I'm rotating each one just a little bit. And that's what's getting us the fan out. So the transform origin plus the rotation gets us that nice little layout. And then when we set T because it's been selected, it will translate up. And that pretty much concludes the looper pile as we're looking in this sort of like simulated poker example. Let's go check out double looper. So double looper here, again, we see a field set with a pile class, and that's getting us this pile of cards, pretty much the exact same thing as we saw before, a couple of minor tweaks to the way that they're rotated and positioned. And then we're also doing a transition on these positions also. So when it's checked, again, we're using the checked hook inside of this field set radio group called the looper, and we can use that to toggle the position. And if it's not checked, we'll put it off screen in some kind of fun, random way, which is cool. And then we also have another field set. This one has the ID of grams, and that's because I use JavaScript to listen for the selected element inside of there. I'm calling it a sidebar, even though here in the mobile layout, it's down at the bottom. But this is much more a standard radio group, and we can go into that one a little bit as well. Um, but we're mostly going to be focusing on the interactions between the two loopers. Like, how did I tie in one looper to communicate with another looper and apply an effect? So let's check that out. So we've got the pile here. We're pretty familiar with the pile at this point. We've got some uh, styles in here for the body uh, and our gallery and our sidebar. This is kind of laying out all the different styles here. This is the responsive nature of it here. And we need to look at some JavaScript. So what I have here is grams on input. So when that field set down here, these filters, when any of them change, I'm going to target the gallery, which we can see up here is the pile of um, Polaroids, and I'm going to look inside of this scope. So this is a way for you to reference the children only of gallery. And I'm going to look to say, hey, any of your children that have a checked child, which is going to be that input type radio. So here you go. This one is now checked. This one is back to being checked. Find the figure picture element and change its class name to the value of this radio in the grams looper list. And that is why when we have one selected here, right? So this is a looper with that current image selected, and we change to lo-fi we see the value of that input type radio be applied as a class name to this element. And since I'm using class name equals, every time I click one of these, I'm going to overwrite the other one. And add, ooh, that looks really nice. It's so mysterious and dark. Nice. OK, we'll come to this one. And when I hit Perpetua, boom, it sets Perpetua as the class name, which I've loaded in a style sheet written by Yuna, by the way. Look at this. Yeah, unpackaged CSS gram. This has everything built into it that you need. And all I'm doing is applying classes. All of the hard work is inside of here. So you should go check that out if you want to use some Instagram filters. And that's the extent of this particular effect. So a double looper, this looper. And I just love you know being able to set my uh, cursor in here and bounce around, applying all the different effects and trying them on. Hit shift tab to go to the other field set group and select an element. Oh, here, let's change this raptor. Let's see, find a cool one. Uh, ooh, dark. All right, cool. And I just love that they can communicate back and forth. They're both individual machines that don't have any awareness of each other. But with this one line of JavaScript and this one listener, I can tie them together and make the single selection of the Polaroid and the single selection of a filter apply to a target that I want. And in this case, it was a child of the first looper. So I hope you enjoyed this double looper. I hope you thought the looper was cool. I hope you liked the pile. And Mini Web Machines is going to keep doing this. We're going to keep making more Mini Web Machines that sort of stand alone on their own and have their own contained functionality. And then every once in a while, we're going to combine them together and build something super rad. So stay tuned for more Mini Web Machines. And I hope you liked this one. And I'll see you around.